What a day it has been. Today we're going to talk about the bad decisions that are impacting your life being made by the people we have voted in office. And I say we have voted in office because we are responsible for the leaders that we have. We don't have the quote unquote luxury to blame our leaders for their bad decisions in America because we are able to hold them accountable and we choose not to. And most of these politicians have been in office for as long as we've been alive and they're making incredibly stupid decisions like spending $6 trillion, like trying to tell any company to build any product. And we'll get into that today and why those are such bad decisions. And it's important to remember as we are swinging or swinging like a tire swing in the front yard towards liberalism, towards totalitarian planned economies where the government runs everything, we need to remember that the same people that are running our country now are going to be running that type of government that we're swinging towards. And the same bad, foolish decisions that are made today are going to be the ones made tomorrow with more power, more influence, and more consequences for us. That is why it's important to talk about this on a show about how to make you successful because we need to take responsibility for our own lives, for our actions as we vote, for the amount of influence we put on our elected officials, how many times we call them, how many times we email them, And if we're not doing those things, then we get what we deserve every time. Voters get the leaders they deserve because we have the responsibility and the opportunity to put great people in the office. And we have chosen fools for way too long, for far too long. Welcome to How to Build a Tent, the podcast on how to make you successful. My name is Matt Williams, part of the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network. Go over to flfnetwork.com. Put in HGBT in the memo fields. You'll get that sweet. 15 ounce mug, 15 ounces, fit all four fingers in that holder for all of you gentlemen with big hands or ladies with big hands. And you will get tons of great content. You get $100 off of our conference, which we just had a phone call about that. It's interesting. All these conferences are getting canceled, but because ours is late October, it looks like we're going to still be able to have ours. And so you're going to be hungry for a conference. You're going to be wanting to go. You're going to need to get this, get that one conference in for the year. The, the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network conference is the one to go to. If you become a member now, you get $100 off. It pays for itself. Go over to flfnetwork.com, get the discount, get the bug, and get tons of great content as well. You can email me, Matt, at howtobuildatent.com. Find me on all the social media sites, How to Build a Tent. Before we get into the bad news, I wanted to touch on a great post by my friend, Michael Foster. Great guy. It's a good to be a man. If you're a man, I highly recommend you going over there and checking out what he's doing. Check out the podcast, the blogs, and things like that. If you're a single mother and you're raising a son and you're worried about that father father figure influence, which as you should be because boys need father figures, I'd highly recommend you go over there and read that material and see what is there? Anyways, he said this. The Christian life has a rhyme, a rhythm. Six days of labor, one day of rest and worship. Beautiful things happen when your life is so ordered. Six days of labor, one day of rest and worship. Saturday, relaxing. Ah, I'm Jewish. Half Jewish. I use Saturday as my Sabbath and then I use my Sunday as a worship day. So I guess I have two days. <laughs> <laughs> but I love this, that the reminder to take a day of rest. It's important to do so for many reasons, and a lot of them we don't know. And I was thinking about that more and how many times that I have missed the blessings that God has written, woven into his law, or that has woven into his commandments that I miss so often because I operate under the assumption that I know everything. 
And if I can't see a correlation between obedience and blessing, then I don't think it's worth doing oftentimes to my shame. And I find myself disobeying, specifically in the times of taking a day of rest, of taking a Sabbath day. Saturday, Sunday, whenever you do it. I know a lot of you that listen to Reform, so you do it on Sundays. That's cool. But the ignorance and pride of man, of myself, where I operate under this assumption, and I know that you do too a lot of times, is we don't go through life thinking we don't have the answers, but we go through with a certain level of confidence and the competence of what we know. And what I mean by that is we assume we know most of the things we need to know. I feel like that's just part of living this life. Maybe it's a bad thing, good thing, but it's bad in the sense that I am diso- I, I don't see these benefits and so I'm not prone to follow them. But if we would just come to that place of humility where I need to trust God even when I don't understand it's beneficial to me. When I feel like I need to work on a day that I should take rest. When I feel like I'm missing out. When I feel like my store is going to be missing out on a large sum of revenue. If I don't leave it open on the Sabbath. If I feel like I'm not going to get the promotion. If I don't go in on the weekends and work extra time. You're going to miss the blessings that God has woven into his commandments for you. Don't miss those blessings. Don't do what I've done so much in my life. It's not worth it. It's always easier and it's always more joyful and full of blessings, full of abundant life when we are obedient to God. All right, let's get into the decisions that are impacting our lives. These are decisions that are being made that are impacting our lives. First, I want to start off with this Cuomo With this Cuomo press conference today, I don't know why the New York, well, I do know why, because New York is one of the, the, is the epicenter of America. It is the glory of the United States. It is the city that represents all of America, if we like it or not. It is the symbol of commerce, opportunity, immigration, the liberty, all of those things are in made up in the symbol of New York City. And so we were listening to this press conference of Andrew Cuomo. I think it's Andrew Cuomo, the governor of New York. And I'm going to be honest, he seems a little nervous. He seems a little nervous. A lot more nervous than he did in previous previous press conferences where he's trying to calm the public. But he was making some points that were really disturbing to me. And I want you to remember this, like I said in the beginning of the show, that it's important for us to see these people, these leaders of ours that we've appointed to make decisions for us, to govern us, to rule over us, because these same people are going to be making the same types of decisions with more power that we give them when we swing towards socialism, when we swing to more of a command style that is where the government is telling us what to make, what to charge. And we see a glimpse of that in these times of crises, which is important for us to remember that we are seeing a glimpse of what it would be like forever, not just temporarily in a moment of crisis, but we're seeing a glimpse of what it would be like on a daily basis when we give over to the government more control of our industry, of our private property, and all of that. And one of the things that Cuomo was talking about. He was talking about ventilators. And it was really interesting. He was complaining about how the federal government isn't paying for him to get the ventilators that he needs. He wants all of these ventilators to be forced to be made by businesses, paid for by the government, and given solely to New York. So he wants the United States, all of us who don't live in New York, to pay for New York's ventilators and have them all go to New York Even though there's shortages across the country, he wants them all to go to New York because they have the most cases, because they are the ones most impacted. Despite in 2015, he had the opportunity to buy ventilators and have them on stock in case of a crisis crisis like this, 
which was status quo, which was typical. You would have these types of things, and he chose not to, and now he's caught with his pants down and wants us all to flip the bill. But I think that was really interesting. But it really, again, gives us a glimpse of how these people would manage, would govern, would make decisions for our whole lives. Remember, the more socialist we become, the more in control they become of our business, of our industry, of our economy. One of the things he said is that he was liking this ventilator pro this ventilator um, product to going to war. He was he was riffing off of Donald Trump using the wartime reference that we're fighting an enemy. And he wants to pick a business to build the battleship, he said, quote unquote. Well, you you got to force a company to build it. Just pick a company. And you could pick this company and just make them make the ventilators. Now, the problem with this and the foolhardiness of this is that there are some companies that are equipped and efficient and have the resources to make ventilators efficiently. They are, they are tooled up. They are ready to do it. And there's some companies that don't. And when he flippantly says, it's that easy. You just pick a company to build this and make them build it. We see how economies like communism and these other industries that are being controlled by the government, either through mass taxation, mass regulation, and mass control become so inefficient and become so worthless and become just big piles of bureaucratic rot. It's because there's no mind, there's no market that is creating competition, that is creating businesses to, to in, um, what's the word I'm looking for? To innovate, to become more efficient, to, build out to become more lean. There's none of that. It's, I don't care what you can do. You're going to build this now. I don't care how much it's going to cost you. We're going to pay you this much for it and you're going to do it. And it's the exact same mindset of the communist party. And we're seeing that with, from a New York governor. It's scary. And he's just talking like you could just pick X to do this. When the market would have decided that this company would have been better. They've been more efficient, they better better quality, better price. And this guy is telling businesses not to open. He's telling businesses what they need to do. Hotels, you're going to open your rooms up for medical beds. You're going to build these ventilators. And he's trying to get the country to do the same. You're going to pay for our mistakes. You're going to pay for our people. It's scary. And these are the people that are controlling. They are dictating to us how we need to act, how our businesses need to behave. And they don't know the damn, a first damn thing about business. They really don't. And it's, it's very sad. All right, I'm going to get to one more thing Cuomo said. And then we're going to get to oh, this bailout package. It's... It's scary. Six six trillion dollars. The third the third package. Six trillion dollars. Well, we're getting a bailout, so you can put your mind at ease, right? <laughs> You're going to be getting a lot of money from the government, or so they say. Why not go spend that at Kingsman Grooming Products? <laughs> go over to KingsmanGroomingPros dot com. Get beard products, pre shave products, after shave products. They just make your face feel wonderful, even in times like this, stressful. That the government is making poor decisions. They're trying to run an economy they don't know anything about. They're spending more money than who knows when. That would make your skin crack from all the stress. But when you use Kingsman Grooming Products, they keep your face, they keep your skin feeling great. You look wonderful. You feel wonderful. What's more than that? Go over to KingsmanGroomingPros.com. Put ten, put HTBT in the checkout and you'll get 10% off. You get high quality products and you support a Christian company. Go over to kingsmangroomingpros.com. Check out what they got and just try one of their products and tell me that that is not the best thing you've ever had before. I'm telling you, their products are fantastic. I absolutely love them. I have never gotten so many qual- so many comments and um, compliments 
on my product on my facial products before, but I do one with Kings and Grooming Pros. So thank you guys. Thanks for all the the compliments and the self esteem boosters that I get. Go over to kingsandgroomingpros.com and see what I'm talking about. The next thing Cuomo wants to do is have. Well, this is what he wants to do, he, and this is kind of under. It's kind of related to what we were just talking about with the battleship and. You know, just get any old company to build anything that I want them to, and they'll be able to do it just fine. He wants the Fed to make companies build them these ventilators, send them all to New York. And when New York is done with the crisis, then he will have them sent. He will take responsibility for them and send them to the next state that has their biggest problem. And when he talks about this, and this is what good politicians can do, they could say things that are so stupid and say things that are so moronic, but they say them in a way where if you're not being challenged and there's no pushback for it, it kind of sounds like it makes sense. It kind of sounds like it makes sense, but it doesn't. And it's completely stupid. So he's talking about this like, oh, you know, yeah, New York does have the most cases by far. So we should send all the ventilators to them. Well, why does the whole nation have to spend money that from their taxes to fund the federal, the to fund New York and their problem when uh, everyone else has shortages too? That's not how this works. The governor of New York doesn't get to dictate where all of our taxes come from. Why should they all go to New York? Secondly, you're assuming that the states are going to hit the apex, the climax of this outbreak all in like chrono- chronological sequential order. That is, after New York has its thing, then Washington's going to get it. And then Washington's going to have its, its heyday. And then California's going to get it. And all of the viruses in all these different states are just going to work in cooperation with us and just be nice and tidy and do one after another and not overwhelm the system at all. And thirdly is, how are you going to ship these ventilators to the next state? What resources do you have to do that? And why don't you just spend those instead of asking the Fed to pay for your ventilators? And who determines where you're going to send them next? Are you going to really spend the cost of shipping them to multiple different states across the country? I don't think so. You definitely are not going to do that. And then you want to be the one to decide where they go. See, when you start asking these questions, even though it sounds good at first, it really just reveals how stupid and foolish these leaders are. I think we're just going to stop there with the Cuomo press conference. This guy is trying to ruin our lives and make these bad decisions. I don't want to bore you. I don't want to stress you out more about the $6 million bailout. Basically, $2 trillion of spending, $4, billion, $4 trillion in federal um, loans, God, six trillion dollars. I, I break it down on my Twitter. If you want to go look at that, look at it, and you can see just how crazy it is. I'm sure you'll hear it from other places. We'll just stop there for now. I hope you guys have a great day, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.